Jerry Mart. Jerry Mart. What's up my people and welcome to the SN95 Power Channel. First off, I want to thank the community for supporting this channel. I'm very grateful for every view and comment that y'all leave. Now, I'm not going to subscribe or bash you, but if you enjoy this content, please tell someone about this channel. So you're thinking about building a fourth generation Mustang, AKA the SN95 Mustang. Now, before you go fill up that shopping cart, let me keep you from making some mistakes that people do when they're building an Airster 95. Now, before I built my car, I remember the list of things I planned on doing to the car. And honestly, when I sit and reflect on it, I had a lot of internet hype bull, excuse me, BS in that cart. So first and foremost, and this is an important thing to think about, you must decide what you want this car to be. So when I say that, think of it like this. Are you going to build a drag car? Are you going to be a street car, a drift car? A everyday car, a grudge car? Those are some important questions that you have to ask yourself before you do this build. In my opinion, it's hard to build a high quality show car that you're going to race every weekend. Now, with that being said, let's get into my first tip. Now, this, this, these first couple of tips are kind of all intertwined and they kind of build on you know, each other. So let me just tell you what this first tip is real quick. So my first tip is do not fall into the temptation of trying to build a 2,500 pound streetcar SN95. Like we all know the advantage of a power to weight ratio, but there's pros and a lot of cons with that. So unless you're about that life, meaning grudge racing, drifting, drag, or any serious competition, don't do it. On paper, it sounds nice to have a 10 can SN95, but as a casual driver, you're gonna hate it. 90 degree summer days without AC or radio is gonna suck. So here's my thought. If you want to do simple weight reduction mods like a K member, sure. But if you wanna go and gut the interior of the car and add Lexan windows, you better be about that life. Now, what I would do for all SN95s is a tubular front end just for weight reduction. For 94 and 95 Mustangs, I would do aluminum heads and the tubular K members and, you know, uh, control arms. But that would be about it for weight reduction. Depending on the quality of the tubular pieces that you buy, you won't have too big of a difference in ride quality. Now, the next tip is still intertwined, you know, with the first one where I feel like you better be about that life if you're going to build it like this. And for this next tip, I think social media has a lot to do with it. In my opinion, there's no reason to build a thousand river horsepower uh, SN95 if you're not out here taking people's money with it. Now, here's the thing. Social media has kind of changed the build culture. People will build a, a four digit car now just for um, clout. You know, it's at one point in time where a guy or girl, they would build like a thousand horsepower Mustang and they were about that hardcore race life, like street racing, track times. That's just how they got down back then. And people just never knew what kind of power those cars made. Nowadays, guys will post dyno videos. They'll tell you their build list from A to Z. And let me see, don't, don't get me wrong. It, to each his own. And if you want to build it like that, then, you know, I salute you. 
But I do think if you build it to that power level, that thing should be a track rat or uh, a high quality show car. Now, let me be clear. This is not a shot at anyone that has a build that's putting four digit power down. But my purpose here is to help you guys out there who are thinking about, or maybe in the back of your mind, like, man, you know, it'd be cool to build a thousand rear horsepower car because that's what the trend is right now. So if you're one of these guys, let me dig a little bit deeper into this for you and try to um, enlighten you a little bit. So think about this. Depending if it's a mod motor or push rod motor, if you make a thousand rear reward, a rear, rear <laughs> if you make a thousand rear, rear horsepower, how much torque do you think that um, motor is going to have? I know if it's a push rod motor, you're going to have at least a thousand foot pounds of torque. So you build this thousand foot pound monster that you take to the dyno for the gram or for a car show, or whatever. And then one day you take it out to a car show and you decide to do a glory pool. Next thing you know, when you finally wake up and your thousand foot pound Mustang is laying next to a tree. Like I said, it's, here, it's, it's not a diss, but I'm just trying to throw something for you guys to think about. With that much power or even less power, you're gonna have to get used to driving that car at wide open throttle. If all you do is dyno pulls or an occasional um, quarter or half throttle pull, you'll never get used to that car at wide open throttle. Even a person that has a lot of seat time with that kind of power can still easily lose control of that car. My suggestion to you, if you're looking to build a fast SN95, is look to build a low 11 second car. It only takes around 450-ish river horsepower to get into 11s with an SN95. And you know, with the right suspension set up and tires, you could possibly touch 10s. How you do that is up to you. But for my new edge crowds, I'm about to start a 11 second build on Project Kendra. And we're gonna be using mostly junkyard parts for this. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell because um, this build is about to start happening real soon. In fact, we're going to, um, what's it called, Metroplex US 41. And we're gonna do that, uh, I believe, April 16th for our first baseline run. And then we're just gonna start building on top of that until we can get to that 11 second mark. Okay, so now let's segue from horsepower to putting down that horsepower. One thing that I like to do is, I like to check out people's tires. And it amazes me what I see sometimes. Okay, so don't get me wrong. I know some of you people, you have a couple of sets of tires, but some of the things I, I see kind of have me scratching my head. You can't have like a Gen 5 Whipple with all season tires on your car. This is one of the areas of your builds that you cannot take shortcuts on. Bad tires, high horsepower cars are a recipe for a wreck. <laughs> Talk. You don't even need a high horsepower car to lose control of it with bad, with bad tire selection. Put a 430 gear on the SN95 Mustang with all season Falcons and see what happens. Oh my God, he's a so what I'm not doing is I'm not saying that you need a set of bead locks for your 400 rear horsepower Mustang, but you need to think about this. Do you plan to drive your car in the rain? If so, you probably shouldn't get a R compound tire. Now, I've been caught in light rain with my um, Nitto 555Rs and I didn't have a problem, but it was light rain. I've never been caught in any kind of heavy rain with that car. But if you do plan on driving your car in the rain, then you should try to find the lowest tread rated tire that you can afford. Now, my cruising tire for my Turbo Mustang is the 300 thread count tire. Now, will I spin that tire? Yes, but it's predictable. And most of the time, one thing I have to do is kind of feather it and I can get control of the car. If your SN95 is not going to see any kind of rain, then you should get a um, good set of R compound tires and just lay that power down. 
Now my last tip I have for you is something people buy but they ignore. Now think of a wide band monitor like your blood pressure for your car. Knowing how to read and pay attention to your wide band can be the difference between letting off the gas pedal or rebuilding your motor. Some people put these gauges in the car because they look cool, but if you have anything beyond a stock car, you need one and you should pay attention to it. In short, a wide band is gonna tell you how healthy your car is under a heavy load. So you build your boosted car and you're out having fun, you decide to do a one bar wide open throttle pull with it. Take a look at your boost gauge and it's reading 14.7 and you look at your air fuel monitor and it's reading 14.7, you're like, man, this is so cool. The problem is at wide open throttle, your, your wide band is reading 14.7 and you don't know what it means. I can tell you what it means. It means that something's gonna go boom real quick. So if, if you have a boosted car and you have a wide band and you don't know how to use it, you don't pay attention to it, then you're a brave person. It doesn't take a lot to make your car run rich or lean because of something and catching it can be the difference of having a bad pool or having a bad month rebuilding your motor. So that's my little short list of things that if you're considering to build an SN95, you should really pay attention to. Now these are just my ideas. What are some of your suggestions? I would love to hear it. So please leave a comment down below and let us know what your suggestions are. Hey, again, I want to thank everybody for supporting this channel. The community that's 95 community is great. And until next time, God bless.